guys, I hope all of you are good and I am Roshni from Learno Hub, the free learning platform. And today I am going to talk about the fourth video of the video series on force and pressure class 8 science. And this video is all about questions exactly so we have already covered the theory and the concepts in the last three videos so this video will only deal with questions so it will help you to improve your problem solving skills it will tell you the approach to solve questions so please watch this video completely the entire video and trust me after watching this complete video you will gain a lot of confidence on numerical solving so with that in mind let's get started Question number one, give two examples each of situations in which you push or pull to change the state of motion of objects. So let us first talk about push. So if you push a ball, what happens when you push the ball? The ball which was earlier at rest now starts to move. So basically the ball changes its state of motion from rest to motion. So pushing the ball helped to change its state of motion. Next scenario could be, a, could be pushing the door. So the door was in a different position. The door was closed. Now when you push the door, the door is opened. So from closed to open. So you could change the state of motion. So if you talk about pulling, let us suppose you pull a trolley. So when you pull a trolley again, the trolley was earlier at rest. And now you, because you started pulling it, now it is in motion. So its state of motion changed. Or when you pull a door, again the same thing. When you pull a door, again the door was at rest. Now the door started moving. It got opened or it got closed, whatever. So these are some of the examples where we see that pushing or pulling can change the state of motion of an object. Now when I say change the state of motion, it could mean that making a body move from being at rest. So initially a body is at rest and you make it move or to stop a moving body. A body was already moving and you make it stop or to increase the speed of a moving body. A body was moving very slowly but now it has suddenly increased its speed. Decrease the speed of a moving body. A body was moving very fast but now its speed got slowed down or to change the direction of motion. So the body was moving towards right and now you applied a force and made it move towards left. So these are the various ways by which the state of motion of an object can be changed. Question number two. Give two examples of situations in which applied force causes a change in the shape of an object. Yes, of course it can. One example is pressing a balloon. So if you take a balloon which is already inflated, you try to press it with your both hands from both sides. What happens? You see the balloon gets squeezed and it changes its shape from spherical to oval. Squeeze a toothpaste tube. So as you squeeze the toothpaste tube, the toothpaste comes out of it and also the tube keeps on changing its shape. So it is changing the shape because of the force which is being applied by you on the tube. Question number three. Fill in the blanks in the following statements. To draw water from a well, we have to dash at the rope. Now if you want to bring water out from the well, so we need to bring the rope towards ourselves. And when we apply force to bring an object towards ourselves, that is called pull. So when we try to bring things near us, that is called pulling. A charged body dash an uncharged body towards it. So a charged body will always attract an uncharged body. Like you saw the example of the balloon which was rubbed on a cloth and it acquired some charge. So it became a charged object and then it could attract small pieces of paper and those small pieces of paper were uncharged objects. To move a loaded trolley, we have to dash it. So if you want to move a trolley which is already loaded, you either need to push it or you need to pull it. The north pole of a magnet dash the north pole of another magnet. Now north and north they are like poles and like poles repel each other. So they tend to go away from each other. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर एन आखर आर्चर स्ट्रेचेस हर बो वाइल टेकिंग एम एट द टारगेट शी देन रिलीजेस द एरो विच बिगेन्स टू मूव टूवर्ड्स द टारगेट बेस्ड ऑन दिस इंफॉर्मेशन फिल अप द गैप्स इन द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स यूजिंग द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स so few terms are given here now we need to fill up the blanks using these terms only so the first one is to stretch the bow the archer applies a force that causes a change in it now how does a bow and arrow looks like so this is the bow and this is the arrow so now when the person is this is the person so now when the person is trying to stretch it in that case what is changing the shape of the bow is changing correct so it is causing a change in shape so we have already used this word the force applied by the archer to stretch the bow is an example of dash force now what kind of force is being applied the force is being applied with the help of his you know, with the help of our hands and the hands are made up of the movements of hands are due to the muscles present inside our body so this is an example of muscular force so this is also being used the type of force responsible for a change in the state of motion of the arrow is an example of a dash force which type of force is causing a change in motion muscular force right because we are applying a force with our hands and a muscular force is an example of a contact force because muscular force acts only when the two objects are in contact for example here the hand of the archer and the bow and arrow they are in contact with each other while the arrow moves towards its target the forces acting on it are due to dash and that due to dash of air now when you leave the arrow from the bow so it keeps moving so what all forces with will it experience it will experience a force due to gravity because earth is always exerting an attractive force on all the objects so it will exert one force due to gravity and the other force would be due to friction of air because as it moves through the air air is always trying to apply a force which is trying to oppose the motion and that is why you will see that after some time i mean it moves for some time for some distance and then it falls to the ground or it hits the target whatever so this happens due to the frictional force exerted by the air question number 5 in the following situations identify the agent exerting the force and the object on which it acts state the effect of the force in each case so let us look at the first case squeezing a piece of lemon between the fingers to extract its juice so let us try to find out all the three things so in this case who is squeezing the lemon so the piece of lemon is being squeezed by the fingers so that means the force is exerted by the fingers right so we can say that the agent exerting force so let me mark this as the agent exerting force is marked as a object will be marked as o and effect will be marked as e so we will find out a o and e so here who is the agent who is exerting force agent is finger because fingers are exerting force on the lemon which is the object object is of course the lemon because the force is being exerted on the lemon and what is the effect of it the effect is that there is a change in shape because the lemon gets squeezed so there is a change in shape because the effect of applying force will either be a change in state of motion or a change in shape but in this case there is no motion but there is change in shape next one taking out paste from a toothpaste tube so in this case again we have to find out these three so which is the agent of agent which is exerting force again in this case also it is fingers because we how do you take out paste from a toothpaste tube by pressing it with your fingers so fingers are exerting force what is the object here object is the toothpaste tube because the force is being exerted on this tube and what is the effect again change in shape because the shape of the toothpaste tube changes 
Next one. In the following situations, the same thing, the question remains the same. We have to find out A, O and E. A load suspended from a spring while its other end is on a hook fixed to the wall. So here this is the load and this is the hook on the wall and it is attached from a spring. This is the load, this is the spring. So in this case, which is the agent exerting force, which is the object and what is the effect of force. So here the agent is going to be the load because the load is actually exerting a force on this hook. Correct? So the load is going to be the, because due to the presence of this load, it is exerting a force on the spring. And what is the object? The object here is the spring. And what is the effect? Effect is change in shape because as the load gets, as soon as you attach this load to the spring, the spring will change its shape. Maybe initially it was like this. As soon as the load is fixed, it will become like this. So the change, there is a change in shape of the spring. Next one, an athlete making a high jump to clear the bar at a certain height. So in this case, who is exerting force? Obviously, the force is being exerted by the athlete, but which part of his body is exerting force? Obviously, the muscles of the athlete is exerting the force. And what is the object on which the uh, force is being exerted? The object is the athlete because the muscles are exerting force on the athlete. And that is why the athlete is moving. Correct? And here, what is changing? The shape of the athlete is not changing. But there is a change in state of motion because now the uh, athlete is jumping. So the, the way he was moving that is changing due to the application of this extra force. Question number six. A blacksmith hammers a hot piece of iron while making a tool. How does the force due to hammering affect the piece of iron? Now in this case what happens is Hammering applies a force on the hot iron which changes it to a desired shape. Now hot piece of iron, the, when the iron is very hot, that time it is flexible enough to take any shape which you want. But once it becomes cold, it becomes extremely hard and you cannot change its shape. Now as long as the iron is hot, when you hammer it, you are actually applying a force. So when you apply force on an object which is flexible enough, then this will result in a change of shape. So you can change the shape to a desired shape so that you can make the tool you want. Question number seven. An inflated balloon was pressed against a wall after it has been rubbed with a piece of synthetic cloth. It was found that the balloon sticks to the wall. What force might be responsible for the attraction between the balloon and the wall? Now before that, let me first ask you, what do you think will happen once the balloon is rubbed with a piece of synthetic cloth? The balloon gets charged. So now you have a charged balloon and when it comes near the wall, it gets stick to the wall. So basically we are talking about force existing between charged objects. So this is nothing but electrostatic force. So whenever you deal with forces related to charges, it can either be magnetic force or electrostatic force. And I already told you magnetic force is all about magnets and magnetic materials. But electrostatic forces are about forces by charged particles. So here you have charged balloon. So this is an example of electrostatic force. Question number eight. Name the forces acting on a plastic bucket containing water held above ground level in your hand. So just look at this lady who is carrying this bucket of water. So this is held in hand and it is quite above the surface of the earth. Discuss why the forces acting on the bucket do not bring a change in its state of motion. So if you look at it, the bucket is not changing its state of motion. It is not, the bucket is not moving. The bucket is stationary. But there are a lot of forces acting on the bucket. So how is that possible? So let us look at the bucket more closely. So this is the bucket. Now since it is being hold by the by a person so therefore there is a muscular force which is acting in the upward direction 
This force is exerted by the muscles of the person holding the bucket. At the same time, there is another force which is acting on the bucket and that is the force of gravity and this force acts in the downward direction. So we have forces acting in opposite direction which compensate each other and therefore the net force comes out to be zero. Now what, ju just imagine what would happen if this person who is holding the bucket just leaves it. So then in that case there will be no muscular force any further therefore the bucket will fall down towards the ground because of the force of gravity. Question number 9. A rocket has been fired upwards to launch a satellite in its orbit. Name the two forces acting on the rocket immediately after leaving the launching pad. Now as the rocket moves upward, one force will always be gravitational force that is the force acting towards the center of the earth. And the next would be the atmospheric pressure because immediately as it leaves the launching pad, it has to cross the various layers of atmosphere. So the atmosphere is also going to exert a lot of pressure on it. So these are the two forces which will be acting on the rocket. Question number 10. When we press the bulb of a dropper with its nozzle kept in water, air in the dropper is seen to escape in the form of bubbles. Once we release the pressure on the bulb, water gets filled in the dropper. The rise of water in the dropper is due to. So what is causing the water to rise in the dropper? The concept here is similar to what we saw in case of drinking straw. So when we try to drink through a straw, we suck in. So the pressure inside the straw decreases. Pressure outside is more. So pressure outside forces the water in the glass to rise up through the straw. So the same thing happens in case of this dropper also. So this happens due to pressure of water, gravity of the earth, shape of rubber bulb or atmospheric pressure yes exactly it happens due to atmospheric pressure because since atmospheric pressure is quite high as compared to the pressure inside the dropper therefore the atmospheric pressure will force the liquid to rise through the dropper tell me guys how was the video did you find it useful please let us know in the comment section and we will be putting in our efforts to bring up the next video i will see you all very soon so stay home stay safe take care bye bye